Well, welcome back to our study in Ezekiel. We're in the fourth section. Now, let me tell you quickly what those four sections are. The first section is chapters 1 through 3, the commissioning of Ezekiel. Chapters 4 through 24, the judgment of Judah and Jerusalem. That's judgment that's going to come, the prophecies that would be fulfilled, many of which we've already seen clearly. And then the third section was the judgment of the nation surrounding the nation of Israel. Uh, which began around 586 B.C. when uh, we see the seven nations that are going to be judged and we see how prophecy and fulfillment is so critical. And now we're in the fourth section, the final section of Ezekiel, which is chapters 33 through 48. And i got to tell you, I've been tempted to preach the entire uh, section of chapter 33 over and over and over again because I believe we're living in the last days. And I believe that there is a strong word to all of us that are believers. Uh, in chapter 33, we saw the fact that each one of us is accountable for hearing the warning from the watchman on the tower. Watchman in the tower in Jerusalem was a man that would watch for the enemy approaching the city of Jerusalem. He would sound the alarm and uh, those that were ready to do battle and uh, could withstand the enemy would be saved and those that didn't listen that were out in the fields and didn't come back into the city and through the gates before they were closed would be lost and uh, that's very much a picture of salvation because we know that uh, God has given us a warning that uh, we are all sinners and fall short of the glory of God and he has sent out the warning that we need to turn from sin and self and turn to Christ and Christ alone for our salvation but he said we're responsible for individually hearing and heeding the warning. But he went further than that. He said there are also the watchmen on the tower. And I believe that's pastors, Sunday school teachers, believers, who also have been commissioned to go into the world and tell everyone the good news of Jesus Christ. And we're the watchmen on the tower. And we're in the end times. You look at everything that's going on and you say people are calling good evil and evil good. And we're to warn them. We're to be the watchman on the tower. And the watchman on the tower is responsible not only for themselves, but they're responsible for the blood of those that need to be warned. What an incredibly strong message I found in chapter 33. In chapter 34, it's even a more convicting of pastors because while chapter 34 on a short-term basis is uh, picturing the priests and the Levites of the day uh, which is clearly stated in chapter 34 as not feeding the flock feeding themselves but not taking care of the flock not strengthening the weak not building up those that uh, were in their care and God's disgusted with them in chapter 34 and I can't help but to wonder if God is not disgusted with pastors, Sunday school teachers, preachers, uh, who are not building up the flock, who are just taking care of themselves, uh, who many times have far more than most of the flock have as far as material blessings, and yet are not strengthening the weak in their flock, not building them up, not teaching them sound doctrine. Recently on the internet it showed what evangelicals believe and it was scary because you wonder what kind of teaching have they been under that they don't understand the basics of the Bible in any case he very clearly says I'm done with the shepherds he says woe to the shepherds they're not taking care of the flock and uh, it's very much clear as as he goes through chapter 34 he says I'm against the shepherds and I wonder how many shepherds he's against today well I want you to look and see what he says he's going to do as a result of the shepherds falling down on their task and the shepherds not doing what they've been commissioned to do it's clearly stated in verse 15 I will feed my flock, and I will lead them to rest, declares the Lord God. 
if you've been following this series, then you know that I've been talking about prophecy and fulfillment. And you're saying to yourself, well, if he rejected the uh, shepherds and he said he was going to take care of feeding the sheep himself, when did God do that? Well, I think the answer is pretty clearly found in the New Testament. But we start to wonder how far ahead did the prophets see? And was there a double meaning in the fact that God would feed the sheep and that he would lead them? Was it just the restoration of uh, Jerusalem and Judea? Or was it even more than that? Well, let's take a look at the first verse from the New Testament. It's found in John 10, 11. Jesus speaking, and he says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So it's quite clear that 600 years later, Jesus, God's son, but also God in the flesh, came to feed the sheep. Uh, the priests, the Levites, had become corrupt. They weren't feeding the sheep, just as they weren't back 600 years before. And God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, and he fed the sheep. But it was only for three years. And uh, he led them, but it was only for three years. Is it possible when we think about prophets seeing mountaintops, saw what God wanted them to see, maybe even if they didn't understand it, and he looked out even further than 600 years after Ezekiel spoke those words? Well, let's take a look again at that chart about how prophets see mountaintops some very near-term events, the restoration of Judah and Jerusalem, the coming of Jesus 600 years later to be the shepherd of the sheep, or did he even see a further out mountaintop? Well, first let's look at the chart and then we'll look at scripture. Notice the prophet seems to be standing in kind of a valley, but he can see across the mountaintops and he can see not only the near-term events, which obviously are clear, but he can see the second coming of Christ as well as Jesus coming the first time. I wonder what God really meant when he told Ezekiel to say, I'm going to create the shepherd that will shepherd my people. Take a look at the next verse. And now we're looking to the future. For the lamb in the center of the throne will be their shepherd and will guide them to the springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. Well, Jesus will be a far better shepherd than I could ever be or anybody that I know. And uh, certainly God has intended for him to be the great shepherd. Uh, and perhaps prophet Ezekiel, even though he didn't understand it, was looking not only to the coming of Christ as being the shepherd that could be trusted to build up the sheep and to watch over the sheep, but that uh, he would be the sheep that would lead us into eternal life. Nevertheless, we see that there's a new covenant of peace coming as well, which has to be out beyond Jesus' day because we didn't get uh, peace. Uh, we got a covenant, but not a peace yet. And so he's coming again, and he'll bring that peace. And we know that uh, God has done these things uh, for a very specific purpose. And you see this theme repeating itself over and over again. So look with me at verses 30 and 31. Then they will know that I, the Lord, their God, am with them, and that they, the house of Israel, are my people, declares the Lord God. As for you, my sheep, the sheep of my pasture, you are men, and I am your God, declares the Lord God. There you have it. It was a warning to the priests and the Levites of the day to feed the sheep. It's a warning today for we pastors, Sunday school teachers, and all of us that are believers to feed the sheep. But God's going to feed the sheep. He's going to take care of all of his, and he's going to give them a covenant of peace, and he's going to give us eternal life if you've accepted Christ as your Savior. So that's my thought for the day. Are you one of his sheep? Have you received him not only as your Savior, but the Lord of your life? And if you're one of his, are you feeding the sheep? Are you doing all that you can to help the weak and to grow strong? Because we're in the end times, and we know that there's coming a day of judgment, 
and you better be on Jesus' side by having received him as Savior and Lord. My thought for the day, God bless you. Have a great day.